Welcome back to Daybreak. Now, some secrets just refuse to be buried. And New York Times bestselling author Madeline Rue explores secrets behind a dorm that was formerly a psychiatric hospital. Sounds creepy. To tell us more about the thrilling and indeed creepy novel Asylum, we are joined by the author this morning, Madeline Rue. Good morning, Madeline. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I love the whole look. I feel like oh, it's so you. consistent <laughs> with the work that you do. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think your makeup girl was a little like, oh. Uh. <laughs> She's like, how, how, what? Do I do? Yeah, I cut her she hair. was one. She was wonderful, though. I think she was just like, I'm just gonna let that be just, what it yeah, is. We yeah. respect her artistic, you know, expression. <laughs> Let's talk about your book. So, Asylum. I've just tucked into it, and um, even though I'm reading it in the daytime. I'm looking over my shoulder. Yeah, I had to. I had to write a lot of it in the daytime. In the daytime, yeah. right? Do you sometimes scare yourself with the stuff that you you write about or that you come up with? I do occasionally. I mean, sometimes you're so sort of technically into it, and you're thinking mm -hmm. ahead, and you're trying yeah. to plan, so you can kind of remove yourself a little mm -hmm. bit from the scariness. Um, but yeah, I was actually. I'm finishing the third book in. I was in the hotel here, and it wasn't uh, the Bates Motel. One. No, no, no. It was very nice. Um, but I was like, I was writing. I was like, I'm really glad it's the middle of the day right now right. because the scene. I think I would have. That's trouble. really interesting to hear that from a writer. I mean, you know, I would think that that's something that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna scare my readers off their chairs <laughs> or something like that. But how did you come up with? Obviously, there seems to be a fascination with you about sort of the dark and mysterious realm. Like, how did you come up with this? kind of story. For Asylum, let's start with that one. Um, well, you know, I, I was reading a lot of teen fiction and I was seeing sort of this void. There wasn't a lot of, you know, horror out mm -hmm. there aimed at teenagers. And I think that, you know, all of the horror you start to see in movies and, you know, for adult books, it's yes. very, very graphic and it's, um, you know, it can be a little much. And I actually am a big baby when it comes to scary movies. I don't like a lot of gory stuff. You're so. like Stephen King. Isn't Stephen King a big scaredy cat? I, I, I Exactly. I feel like that's like actually... the female Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, but, um, <laughs> but I actually think that's a good quality to have because mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're kind of in tune with your reader. You don't right. want to go too far. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to alienate people. So um, I just wanted to sort of put something out there that was like, here's a horror story for teenagers, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and um, there are the creepy pictures inside and everything. I want to I want to talk about the creepy pictures. I'm looking <laughs> at that and thinking these have got to be real. Yeah, many of them are. You use real pictures from, from yeah. asylums and other mental hospitals. Is that yeah, correct? exactly. There's um you know there's a huge wealth of of archives in the U. S. Mm -hmm. that you can and across the world that you can draw from. Um, and you know they're basically free to use. I mean, you know like they're just cover, there. Your cover is so <laughs> creepy. I know. Um, the third book I saw the cover recently, the preview of it. And it's probably the best one. I'm really excited. But um, yeah, it's uh, they're just out there, and I think you have to walk a fine line between sort of exploiting these sure. people who you know mm -hmm. lived a really. Um, horrible experience. The dismal, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. just really, um, really upsetting. But I also think it's important to put that out there and sort of confront it and Gives be like, it the artistic punch that right, your story yeah, needs. this yeah. is the past, and it, you know, it really happened, and mm -hmm. we've come a long way mm -hmm. in mental health treatments, but we still have a long way to go. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to sort of remember how recent that past is. You know, this is only the last 50, 60 years. So wow. Okay, so <laughs> from there, <laughs> it's quite heavy. Let's yeah. go to Sanctum. So um, our protagonists are in for another adventure. Yeah. Yes, they and in are. Sanctum, it doesn't get any brighter. The no. setting, the setting itself is dark and creepy. But I love the thrill of it. I like how you feel like, ooh, this is so scary, but I'm going to keep going anyway. It's, yeah. it's like you're in the middle of the uh, cemetery and you're too afraid to go back. Yeah. But you're also afraid to keep yeah. stepping forward. Tell us about Sanctum. Um, well, the first book, Asylum, kind of ends on a cliffhanger, mm -hmm. which some people were very like, ah, you know, yeah. what, what happens next? Is there a second one? So uh, the trio, Dan, Abby, and Jordan, um, they're still having sort of uh, really vivid nightmares. Uh, you know, based on what they experienced in mm -hmm. the first book. And so they feel like there's a lot of unfinished business and they're worried, like, is this ever going to go away? Right. Um, and so they get a sort of creepy message from somebody in the first Ooh. book. <laughs> and so they're lured back to the same place, but they're a little wiser, you know, they know more what they're going into. Mm -hmm. um, so this time the focus is more on, you know, the threats are a lot less supernatural in a way. Right. They're still cloaked in mystery, but it feels much more immediate, like somebody mm -hmm. really is there trying to get them. Um, so yeah. it's a little bit less supernatural, but still mysterious. Still got that, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. factor. So you're, you were you mentioned earlier you like to write most of your stuff during the day. Yeah. You seem to have a keen awareness of the whole you know mental health situation, awareness of, of how aware people are about mental health, yeah. and uh, and uh, a little fascination with the supernatural. How do you sit down and start writing? Do you get inspired by I guess movies and stories you've read, or do you sometimes write out of this? 
fears you have? Personal um, fears you might you know, have? it's a little bit of both. Uh, you'll notice there's very few things with spiders in there because I would never Are even be able to. Oh, Are you arachnophobic? Are you really? Big oh, time. well, we have a spider just for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have like, an aquarium no. of spiders just for you. Oh, my spring. gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm writing a new series, and I, like, confront that fear. There's mm -hmm. a lot of spiders in that one. But, um... No, I don't know. It's a balance. I love um, unreliable narrators where you're a little like, are they yeah. actually, are they the one doing this? Like, can oh, I trust this great. person? You know, I love, I've read a lot of books like that and I always love it because you're like looking for clues. You're like, oh, are they imagining You're on things? edge. Yeah, you're exactly. Edge, yeah. Um, Not everyone can do that successfully. You do that well, though. Thank you. And I let, you know, I think um, teen fiction, there's not a ton of male protagonists. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to tackle having um, a young man be the forefront and also have him struggle with mental health issues because I feel like, you know, oh my goodness. a lot of teenagers, you know, they might be a little like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, mm -hmm. depression's difficult to deal with, but sure. here's somebody who's like a hero in a book and, you know, I can deal with these things in my right. life and still, you know, be heroic in a lot of ways. Yeah. So well, there goes my to-do list. I'm going to be reading these books the whole day today. <laughs> People can, uh, they have a chance of meeting you. You've got a book yep. signing coming up. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be at the Glorieta One National Bookstore on okay. the 18th at 2 p.m. There you go. And then in Cebu at the Ayala Center, 4 p.m. National Bookstore on the 19th. Perfect. So. And if they want to follow you on social media or yes. stalk you, I mean, fo yeah, follow, <laughs> not stalk. Absolutely. <laughs> How do they find you on social media? Um, I'm t on Twitter way too much, so they can Great. definitely get in touch with me there. <laughs> and uh, on my Facebook fan page, I love to keep in touch with people. So. Perfect. Well, thank you so much yeah, for stopping by very early in the day. Was it still oh, dark no. when you left the hotel? No, it was bright. It was, bright it enough was for lovely. you not to be afraid. Yeah. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much, Madeline. That's Madeline Rue, best-selling author of Asylum and Sanctum.